already uh, on to the second quantum revolution. Uh, enlighten us, what kind of oddities or weirdnesses can we expect here? Now, the, the second quantum revolution exploits the, really the, the properties that are exemplified by the Schrodinger cat. And so they exploit the fact that we can put a system into a superposition of state. They exploit also another important ingredient of quantum mechanics is that it is the, the law of quantum mechanics do not obey the law of uh, classical logic. So I if you think again of the cat and of what it means, a superposition of state, you, we have at the quantum level that a system can be in a superposition of state that correspond to different discrete outcomes. And as we, we said, you will obtain a definite outcome that corresponds to one of the states at the moment where you make a measurement. But before you make the measurement, the outcome is non-defined, is completely non-defined. And this very fact is in contradiction with classical logic because since the time of Aristotle, uh, another Greek philosopher from the 4th century BC, classical logic relies on the identity principle. And the identity principle is what you already alluded to when we were talking about the cat, is that a logic proposition cannot be at the same time true and false. And as you said, an apple is not an orange, and we can also say a cat is not a dog, right? But in quantum mechanics, we can be in a superposition of outcomes that are technically called mutually exclusive. This is really what it is about uh, when we invoke the identity principle. To be dead or alive are two mutually exclusive uh, propositions. And so, we can exploit this fact that we can bring a system into a superposition of state to design new way of computing that are different from the classical computing uh, approach where in classical computing we encode the information into a classical bit which is a physical system that can be that can take two different values a classical bit can be in a state that corresponds to a logical one or in a state that corresponds to a logical zero. But it cannot be both at the same time. But now think of the cat or of a quantum system that can be in a superposition at the same time of two states that have the outcome that corresponds to zero or one. This will allow me to process these two outputs in a parallel way. And this parallelism is really the essence that is exploited in the second quantum uh, revolution. Because if I think of computing, I have a qubit, and then I can build several qubits. And the fact that I can process all the inputs in parallel instead of having to process them one after the other or separately, like in a classical computer, lead to uh, an exponentially faster way to process information or to carry out complex computational tasks. And this is really the, the prospect that is becoming available by developing quantum computers. Quantum computers will allow us to, to carry out a computational task in a time that is exponentially shorter than the time that is needed by a classical computer. And this opens a lot of new avenues in very many different areas, in, in logistics, in all the domain where you need to process a lot of information, right, in a short time. Think, for example, of application to health, right? You have lots of data, but you want to react quickly. We have a good example now with the pandemic, you can couple this very fast processing of information with artificial intelligence, and then it is very important also for a lot of applications for logistics. Or you can do what Feynman was proposing, to 
simulate complex quantum systems with a quantum computer. And this also opened a lot of new avenues. <laughs>